So in this video, it's actually going to be a two for one. I made an update last month about how the three colonies that I had were doing. It's been a month now. So after you hear the first update, I'm going to give you the second update so you can see what has happened in a month between the hives. Let's do this thing. So I'm actually recording this video the same day that I recorded the video from a week or two ago talking about how I use the pulley system to transfer my first caught swarm. Now in that video I showed you how the Freedom Hive had some bearding going on because it was a really warm day and that's the same here with the Garden Hive. And in this first clip you can enjoy the zoomed in flowers in the background and the not zoomed in me for some reason. There we go. All right, so I just did my inspection of the sun and moon hive after about a month of it being in its current location, maybe a little bit less. They have accepted the new queen, which is awesome. She has plenty of brood in there that we saw last time. So I didn't even look in there for a brood or honey because I know it's there and they just get to do their thing. But I saw some fanning bees. They were doing a great job. There's plenty of activity at the entryway. And what I wanted to look for was where they had built out to because according to Dr. Leo, as soon as they start to build out on the second to last frame, that's when you want to add more frames so that they don't, don't start to think they're running out of room and then swarm when you don't really want them to. So there were six frames in there. They were just starting to build out on the fifth frame. So I just went ahead and added four frames. So now they have 10 frames to work on, four totally empty ones with some foundation. And so uh, let's go see how the other ones are doing. Now, because all three of my previous colonies and even now this one, had some hive beetle activity, I saw in the Lands group a recommendation to only give the bees as many frames as they can protect. Now I think that mainly applies to frames that have comb built out on them, but um, I have frames with foundation and so it sounds like that's still kind of carried over. So since my last video, I in my last video I told you how I put 10 frames in all of the hives just to give them plenty to build out on. But what I went ahead and did in the three 20 frame hives was I actually went through and removed all the extra frames that they weren't building out on, minus two. So whatever they were built out on, plus two frames I left to make it easier for them to defend. So that's the big change between my last update and this update. Now what that means is that I'm it necessitates me checking the hives more often, which is actually fine with me because I love checking on the hives, but I just have to peek in at the very least once a week to make sure that they're not building out on the last frame or preferably the second to last frame because at that point you need to add more frames so that their swarming instinct doesn't kick in. So at that point they were building out on their sixth frame and when I checked in last they were building out on the eighth frame. There was honey and brood built out to the fifth frame and so I went ahead and added three new frames to make a total of 11. And I did see some hive beetles still. So now I'm up at the umbrella hive. This is the one that I just transferred over from the toucan swarm trap on Monday. So I wasn't expecting to see a ton in here, but I saw that they had built out, they're starting to build out on the fourth frame. So just like with the sun and moon hive, I went ahead and added a total, made a total of 10 frames. So I added six. So they've got plenty of space. The one thing I need to do on this one is to just screw those two screws in on this divider board so that they can go to the other side if they want. It's not quintessential, but I think I'll do it the next time I have a chance. And <laughs> I noticed as I was up here that there's peaches growing on our peach trees. Yay! <laughs> you might think, of course, they're peach trees, but we've been here two years. This is our third year being here, and we had zero peaches the past two years, I think because of some late frosts. Anyway, I'm excited about the peaches. <laughs> Bye. 
So, like I mentioned in that last clip, I finally got those screws installed into the divider board so that they could go to the other side if they want to. Now, at that point, they were building out on their fourth, and when I checked on them, they were building out on their sixth frame. There was brood on the four, so I went ahead and added three frames. They're still pretty small and just kind of chugging along, but I wanted to give them some room to work. And I did spot the queen. I wasn't looking for her, but I happened to spot the queen on the third frame, which was fun. So I'm working my way around the property because I have my hive spaced out, because you can check out the video where I talk about some strategies that you can use to place your hives and one of those strategies is to spread them out so that it reduces the amount of drift. So I started out by the barn where the sun and moon hive is, made my way up to the orchard where the umbrella hive is, came out of there and then went past these cement blocks to this tree where I hung my swarm traps. The reason I'm pausing here is because I ca we caught a second swarm in the flower swarm trap at our friend Paul's house. Thanks Paul and Diana. So I just got this location leveled with these cement blocks to get ready for our fourth colony moving in this weekend. Celebración, as we say in my Spanish classes. Let's go check on the Freedom Hive. So now I'm heading to the location of the last hive, which is by our front porch, patio. My husband and I have an ongoing discussion about which is the porch and which is the patio, and which is the front door and which is the back door. So if you have some insight, please leave it in the comment because this, to me, is the back door because it's on the back side of our house that nobody comes in except for the kids when they're playing so to me that's the back door but it's designed to be the front door so to Jared it's the front door and for the life of me I can't keep straight if that's the patio or the porch anyway tell me if I'm wrong or right I say that's the and now I just don't even know is that the porch or the patio I don't know let's get back to beekeeping okay and I forgot to mention, one of the things I did see at the Sun and Moon Hive was a fair amount of hive beetles. So I'm not super worried about it, but it's good to be aware of. So as you can see, these guys are building out on their sixth frame. So I'm going to give them four more frames too. I'm just going to have everybody in, have ten frames right now. And I'm going to be a little bit nosy and try to find some brood just because I'm here. <laughs> So here in the Freedom Hive, things are looking good. I did see some hive beetles in here as well, but they had it, they were starting to build out on the sixth frame, which is awesome. So again, I gave them four more frames and I might have to add to this one before adding to the others, but now I know all of them have 10. In this one, the frames were noticeably much heavier with bees and brood or pollen than with the other two. So this one's definitely my strongest one so far. So thanks again, Monty. <laughs> So thanks again, Monty. But there were definitely at least two or three solid frames of just br of brood, and they were building them out really nicely. There were some strings of bees on that first one. Several drone cells, a bunch of drone cells actually. And then there's that darker brood that I was expecting that I, I, I noticed the very, very light brood on the sun and moon hive, and I wondered, is this, is this actually brood? And this is the brood color that I was more anticipating. So I went ahead and put those last four frames in that I just hadn't got around to putting in yet. Gave them 10 frames total and closed it up. I didn't try to look for the queen. I didn't happen to spot her, but it's getting kind of dark and she's obviously doing her job. So we're doing good so far. So as you saw, the previous two hives built out on two frames, 
over a month. And so they're working hard building this all from scratch. But when I got to the Freedom Hive the other day when I was checking on it, Previously they had been on the 6th frame and now they're on the 13th frame. So that was just amazing. They are busting it out. It's a strong hive. It's a strong colony. So thanks again to Monty the Suburban Sodbuster and because this because this is from his mother colony the Taj Mahal. So Monty you got some good bees. Now the one interesting thing that I noted from this colony is a lot of drone cells. So in the past, I think that was frowned upon and maybe some of those cells were even destroyed. And now um, that's not as big of a concern. I don't really know why yet, but I saw a lot of, lot of drones. Some of them, I even wondered if they were queen cells and they were building out on the 13th frame and that's how many frames that they had. So it made me wonder if they were gonna start to swarm or if they are swarming. So you'll have to stick around to find out if they do swarm, I hope not. I hope I put some more frames in soon enough uh, that they won't. But uh, this hive, this colony is so strong and just working really hard. So this is my workhorse hive. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're enjoying this, can you just like it down below? Thanks. And now I introduce to you the garden hive. So in the video from a week or two ago where I showed you how I transferred the cot swarm and used the pulley system, I mentioned that my friends Paul and Diana had seen some activity at their swarm trap. So I went ahead and retrieved that swarm and now we have the garden hive. And in this hive there's 12 frames possible so I just allowed them to have all the frames immediately. Now I don't even have a video of me taking down the flower swarm trap because it went the same way that it did with the toucan swarm trap into the umbrella hive which you can check out the video for. But the one big difference was that when we got this swarm trap down it was heavy. So my friend Paul was looking and had been watching for the swarm itself and hadn't seen any and, and so he was just seeing some bees here and there. But it turns out that they must have been there for a while because they were doing some work. So we got it down, we brought it here, we got it installed. So after a week or two of checking on it, they were building out on their seventh frame. I went ahead and gave them all 12 just right off the bat. And I forget, when I transferred the swarm over, I forget how many frames they had been working on already, maybe, maybe five or even all six, I'm not sure. But it was a hefty swarm. So a couple weeks ago, they were building out on their seventh frame. So when I checked on them this time, they were actually starting to build out on their 12th frame of the 12 frame hive. Now they have a lot of work to do on the 10th and 11th frames, but they are also busting it out similar to the Freedom Hive. Now, unlike previous times when I've tried to inspect the hives or get into the hives, I finally used a smoker this time. At first I was thinking, oh, it's natural beekeeping. I'll just be all natural and not even use a smoker. Well, come to find out when I was in my part three of the sun and moon hive where I was checking to see if there was any brood and actually in part two of the sun and moon hive as well when I didn't have Monty when we were transferring it over in parts two and three of inspecting the sun and moon hive I wasn't using a smoker and I wish that I had and the reason is because as you can see in this clip from when Monty and I were transferring over the frames that smoke just cleared those bees out so quickly and we were able to keep working without running the risk of, of killing them First of all, because I don't want to kill my bees, but second of all, because then that makes them angry because it releases this hormone or pheromone and it makes other bees come after you. So I finally used my smoker today and it was a really big help. Now Monty had this brilliant way of lighting the smoker so that it would stay on and be easy to light. So if you're interested in these videos, you can subscribe so that you don't miss hearing about that one and just get that notification bell marked. But I used the smoker this time and, and I think I killed zero bees this time as opposed to half a dozen or a dozen the last couple times that I've been into the hives. So use your smoker, <laughs> there's a reason. Now one fun thing that I've been experiencing for the first time in these hive inspections is just seeing how very different each colony is. So I'll tell you what I've learned so far. So the sun and moon hive colony I would say is pretty normal I guess. Not particularly aggressive, not particularly calm, <laughs> but building out well with their brood and honey. Now this umbrella hive is like my brood making machine. There is so much brood 
packed on three-fourths of each of the frames, front and back, with a little bit of honey at the top. So it's pretty interesting. So if I do need to make a split, or choose to make a split, because one of my hives <coughs> maxes out the space, I'm probably gonna get some brood from there. Now, the number one word that I have to describe this particular colony is feisty. I got stung the other day through my jeans on my legs. This is the hive, this is the colony that's like really intuitive of how to sting people. And so they just are constantly going after my legs. It's fine just walking around out here. They're not particularly aggressive when we're not messing around with the hive. But as soon as I open up the hive and start working with the frames, they are all over me. So this was kind of a unique experience compared to my other hives because I felt like I was smoking them to death and, and I know that if you smoke bees too much, they can get kind of agitated with you, but it was like, man, they just would not move out of the way of the frames so that I could put them back. And they were constantly going after me and I was looking at my legs, swiping off bees here and there so that I wouldn't get a million stings. <laughs> uh, so I think I'm gonna have to be a little bit more prepared next time, maybe with a, maybe with a full suit or maybe with a, like an apron on the front and the back or something. It took so long to look through this hive because they were so aggressive, I guess. Now, there's been a lot of talk on the Layens group about aggressive colonies, and my hive, this hive is not as aggressive as, as some of the ones I've heard of, but a lot of people say, hey, just requeen. A lot of people say, no, don't requeen. That's good that they're aggressive. They're protecting their honey. So there's, there's definitely discussion on that. I'm pretty happy with them at this point. Uh, they're just a little difficult. So there you have it. I couldn't have asked for a better start to my natural beekeeping journey in this first year. Now with four solid colonies. Thanks so much for joining me.